Hey everybody, Dan Sparrow, www.theclinicaltrialsguru.com. Really quick post, really important, never heard it discussed before, at least on the internet or anywhere in, you know, in a public uh, space like this. But it's an issue of trial participants calling sites up. Well, they're not trial participants yet, they're hopeful trial participants. And they're calling sites up, leaving messages saying, hey, when does your next study start? I'm interested in this study, you know, when can I come in and get screened? What's the next step? What's the process? Can someone get back to me? Here's my number, blah, blah, blah. And what we're seeing is more and more trial participants calling uh, these sites, but the sites are not getting back to them in time. And trial participants and research centers can both learn something. And the lesson for each of them is, is obviously different. For the trial participants, you've got to understand that research centers, research facilities, we're not running coffee shops or cafes or restaurants where customer service is the number one most important thing. First of all, trial participants, you're not necessarily the customer of that research center. The customers would be the drug companies or the CROs, which are the contract research organizations that manage the studies. Or if you're like a... Uh, a federally funded research clinic, your customer is the government, right? So trial participants, you're not the customers. Um, so as far as like getting great customer service like you would at a restaurant or you would like at a mall or something like that, um, you're just not going to get it. But that doesn't mean the research clinic is going to just, you know, kind of shoo you away. They do need you and they need other people like you to continue joining these studies. But it's going to take a little a little bit of persistence on your part to actually get a call back or to talk to somebody. 80% of the time when you call a research clinic, they're probably overwhelmed, overworked, doing tons of studies. They got hundreds of people calling every day. And they probably don't have anyone dedicated to just calling people back. They probably have the study coordinator who's already overworked in charge of returning calls and essentially in charge of customer service. Um, in a traditional business, it would be customer service. So you've got the study coordinator doing all this stuff. And at the end of the day, the study coordinator's personality is not one who's uh, centered around customer service. They're centered around collecting data. They're more analytical in their thinking. They're more scientific, and um, customer service is like probably very low on the totem pole in terms of their skills. Uh, so, study participants or potential study participants, you know, I understand that you get frustrated when you leave messages and try to qualify for studies, and it may take a week or more to get a phone call back. But here's what you can do I call it the Dr. Pepper method. And it will work. Every 15 minutes, find out when that research clinic opens. If you really want to get in a study or really want to learn more information about the studies that that site is offering and you hope to be able to get into one of those studies, here's what you should do. When that site opens, let's say they open at 9 a.m. and they close at 5. From 9 a.m., I would call. I would call at 9.15. I would call at 9.30. I would call at 9.45. I would call at 10. I will call at 10.15, I will call at 10.30, I will call at 10.45, I will call at 11. I will call 11.15, 11.30, and you see where I'm going. You want to call every 15 minutes, nonstop, until you get someone to talk to you. And then I guarantee you, if you use this strategy, which I call the Dr. Pepper strategy, because you're hyper, and you're well, you, you should be well caffeinated, um, I guarantee you that that strategy will last like one or two days before you will get someone to talk to you, maximum. you probably get someone to answer your question before noon if you're doing that. But I guarantee you it will not last longer than two days. And I've used this myself when I've called drug companies who uh, owed us money or other vendors who owed us refunds or whatever and they're running late on their payments. I would call every 15 minutes. The average is two hours, I would get a response. So for those of you hopeful trial participants, you know, understand that the business that we're in, 
doesn't necessarily revolve around customer service, although my, my company, South Coast Clinical Trials, I'm in charge of that cu uh, customer service uh, uh, type of um, function. So I will actually go out of my way to answer everyone's call within that day. But other sites, I know they're overworked and they have study coordinators doing everything. And the last thing they want to do is return 100 phone calls and pre-screen 100 people for a study. So they want to see who's really motivated, who's persistent enough to keep calling. And I guarantee you, you're going to be uh, given an answer. They'll either tell you you can join or not, and, but they'll, at least you'll know. And then you can move on to the next research clinic if you really want to get into a study. And research sites, you know, there's not much you can do. I understand that performing the actual clinical trial and actually implementing all the study procedures is more important than returning people's calls. But what I can suggest is maybe having someone, even on a part-time basis, in charge of just answering calls, taking messages, maybe training them on how to pre-screen a little, and then you can kind of filter out the ones who you know it immediately would not qualify from the ones who may and the ones who probably would qualify, and then you can just focus your time on those when you have time. But you know, we understand and I'm trying to let the trial participants or the potential trial participants understand that returning phone calls and things like that, especially when you're not in the study, because you have to understand, we have people calling us who are already in our study and we have to return their calls because they may be calling in about an adverse event or something. So those people's calls we return like within an hour. Uh, but for those of you who are not in a study and want to get in, you know, it's kind of like low on the list of priorities, unless the site is really desperate for new participants, which, you know, you'll probably get a call back. But chances are, when you want to join a study, is probably when they don't really want or, or necessarily need more trial participants at that time. So if you really want to get in, use my Dr. Pepper strategy every 15 minutes. Hope this helps. Hope it helps alleviate a lot of frustrations for those of you expecting a call back, like within the hour. Like I said, this is not a traditional business that we're in. We're not selling you panini sandwiches or cappuccinos. You know, this is clinical trials, it's serious stuff, and customer service is probably low on the on the totem pole. And you know, we need to get better as research professionals, but at the end of the day, really we're conducting clinical trials and we need to take care of the participants that are in the studies before we can actually get back to phone calls of people who want to join. It's unfortunate, but that's the way it is. And if you want to call me, I can help you out. doesn't matter what study you're in. I can see if I can uh, let you know of some research clinics in your area. Uh, my number is 714-484-4904. And once again, it's Dan from theclinicaltrialsguru.com. That's www.theclinicaltrialsguru.com. Thanks a lot.